Hi, everyone. I'm Laurie Itkin. I'm a certified divorce financial analyst practicing in California, also known as a CDFA. And I'm joined here today by Zach Taylor, who's a mortgage lender with over 30 years of experience, specializes in divorce. He's worked collaboratively with me on many divorce cases in California. And in fact, I used him for my own refinance a couple of years ago and got that sweet 2.75% 30-year fixed rate. Um, so we're here today because the issue is this. Everyone has these sweet, low mortgage rates, right? These 30-year fixed at these low rates. You're going through divorce and you find that, you, you know, you're trying to, one, some, one spouse is trying to buy the other person out. And they don't want to have to refinance that mortgage to get the other spouse off and lose that sweet rate. And Zach, some people tell me, no problem, Laurie, I'm just going to assume the mortgage. Tell me about loan assumptions, Zach. It comes up all the time. And um, so briefly, uh, there is a process called a divorce assumption because um, a divorce is a life event, just like a death where you can you know, um, possibly remove somebody from the mortgage without a refinance. Um, so the issue is that um, you got to qualify, right? Um, and so that's very difficult when you're now responsible for the mortgage on your own, right? Um, and then you're dealing with uh, a clerical staff because you, you're going to want to call the loan servicer, not your loan officer. Um, so who, your mortgage statement, you're going to go to the toll-free number there, ask for the divorce assumption department, have them send you the process, the cost, um, how long it takes. Um, and, you know, you can reach out to me if you want to, and I can quickly run through the numbers to see if you would have a shot at qualifying um, before you do the process. But remember, you can't even apply until your divorce is final. So it's really difficult to get that uncertainty out of the way, you know, early in the process. Right, because so, some of these, you know, we have couples who've been separated for several years before yeah. the divorce is final. Yeah. And how can you, you can't even start the process of applying for the assumption until right. your divorce is final. That's a huge challenge. So what are the yeah. alternatives, Zach? Yeah, yeah. So the alternatives is you give your spouse time in the marital settlement agreement in order to get you off the loan. And if the assumption is not possible, then you're going to have that same timeline with which to either refinance your spouse off the mortgage or um, you um, have to sell the property at some point, right? That's always the big bummer in the end. And nobody wants to get a 6% or 7% yeah. mortgage now, and they don't want to sell the property. That's the whole point. Yeah. You're trying to do a buyout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the other solution is to refinancing is to do a home equity line of credit. If the if the other spouse, exiting spouse says, hey, I'm going to stay on the mortgage to help you out. You know, I want my kids to stay in the same neighborhood, same schools. Um, and I want you to be able to afford the payment, right? So in cooperative situations, um, then the, the remaining spouse that's going to get the house can go out and get a home equity line of credit. We offer amazing 30-year fixed rate options. Um, and then um, we just do the math and is a home equity line in co combination with your keeping your mortgage, does the math work better that way? Or does the math work better to actually refinance the loan? Right. And, and what I do with yeah. Zach and the parties is I'll say, look, you've got this great mortgage at a great rate, $500,000 left on it. Maybe you only need 100000 or 200000 additional right. to buy out your spouse. Let's look at a home equity line of credit. Right. Rates will be higher. But hey, if you're only paying a high rate on a small amount of money and you're keeping that small right. rate on a big amount of money, that math right. might right. work. Right. Now, just to make sure we do all the math, because on uh, if you need a larger amount of money, right? The home equity line might not be the best bet because you're going to calculate what the blended rate is. So if you need four hundred thousand, you only owe two hundred thousand. The refi is probably going to be better. So you know we're going to go through the math on each one. Um, six one nine eight one three seven nine zero eight. Old school. You can always call me. Um, Zach Taylor Mortgages with an S dot com and it's Z A C H. Thank you, Zach. We appreciate you being here with me today. Thanks.